This is a normal one that I uh, decided just to kind of whip out. I uh, didn't really know what to expect here, which is generally the case with normal runs. Um, the way I figure it, it's a little easier to go with survival than it is to go with brutality or, or tactics, just because kind of you can kind of afford to take a couple hits here and there. As you'll end up seeing in this run, I do take a lot of hits. This is just beginning game stuff, just trying to figure out, you know, what I can do. And then I end up with the Elite, of course, because that's just kind of how it works. But in an open space like Prison Depths, that is actually the best ability to have, the little Aura. Uh, because you have that opportunity just to kind of run away a little bit, especially with the Inquisitor. All it does, all you need to do is just kind of parry shots at it. Um, you don't have to deal with anything like boxes or... Um, you don't have to deal with boxes, you don't have to deal with um, lasers shooting at you, you don't have to deal with any of that. Just the aura, and then you should be good to go from there. Right about then is the moment where I decided, okay, this is a tactics run, should be fine, shouldn't be a big deal. You can see me forgetting to parry. Sometimes I forget how to play the game. And with because of the bombers, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult in uh, trying to really traverse the level, and this is kind of the case with the first two levels. Because you're trying to figure out, you know, how can I avoid certain enemies? And the bomb is really, they make it tough. Apologies for sniffling a little bit. I got some allergies or a cold or something. I don't know what's going on right now. But I'm not a big fan of the War Spear. It, it has a really kind of annoying... What is it? It, it has a really kind of annoying uh, launch. So what I mean by that is it takes at least a second for it to go. And if you are not on point and if you don't predict accurately then you kind of get screwed a little bit especially with failed experiments failed experiments are very annoying on brutality runs sometimes but that's where worst spe uh spear kind of shines is in that you know kind of cluster of enemies right there You're gonna kind of see where War Spear kind of shines, and I got to 30 pretty quickly. I wasn't expecting that. Typically, I wait till the end of the level to grab the uh, the food, the non-infected food. But this time, I figured, okay, like I need a little bit of health, and right now I am not doing great on the run. So I pick up this ice grenade. The ice grenade, I don't typically use it on runs. Even in 1.0, I wasn't using it. But well, 1.0 is because I use the ice bow, and the ice bow appears just at will. And I think 1.1 is when it got nerfed, and then I just kind of stopped using freeze from there. I know uh, ice grenade still has the uh, damage reduction. So, and now it's a survival, uh, mut uh, not mutation, it's a, now it's a survival uh, skill. And that was actually a big buff to it, it really needed that. Got the nice little parry right there. Nerves of Steel, the timing can be a little bit tough to uh, begin with, but once you kind of get it going, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory, in my opinion, at least.
So this is version 1.4 um, as of today. Well, now it is August 30th, I believe, 2019. It has not come out for consoles yet. Uh, so it is still only on Steam, but it will be out for consoles hopefully within the next month or so. I think 1.4 has been the best update they've given so far. And you can see my great luck in the, uh, in the uh, Reforge that typically tends to happen sometimes, and sometimes you get something amazing. And with dual stat weapons, you really need to be careful on how you're going to, um, you know, reforge. If you're looking for like a rare affix or something like that, don't. I would suggest don't bother unless you get a legendary weapon. I'm just climbing up here to get the money. It's not that necessary, but. Eh, free two thousand dollars. Why not, right? Yeah, so right there I really should have doubled parry. I, I definitely made a big mistake right there not doing that. And uh, I actually wasn't expecting him to live that far. I'm not sure why he survived, but he did, so... You know, it is what it is sometimes. Can't do anything about it. And that is not really what I wanted. I do apologize for the audio, audio skipping a little bit. Um, still kind of new to this recording thing, so still trying to work out the kinks a little bit. Um, grab the wolf trap. Wolf trap is my favorite um, skill to use in survival. I think it is phenomenal. Um, it does so much damage, and I, I get rid of it pretty early, but at some point I do grab another one. Um, and that's honestly what helps me win a lot of the time. Those field experiment bumps can be kind of can be kind of gnarly. They will just knock you into the most random spots. Completely failed the parry. I think at some point I do end up using a health potion pretty soon. I'm not sure exactly when I use it. Might have been present depths, but not entirely sure. But I do end up using it because my melee stack runs pretty high eventually. It was a very sloppy beginning for me, and a lot of it was just me not playing well. And some part of it was also just the enemies just being a little bit overwhelming because I didn't have a great build. Here I wanted a better shield, but I'm not running any sort of brutality at the moment, so frontline shield is kind of not the best. Um, so I take on a couple different strategies here. Originally, it was a more defensive build. I, as you'll see, I, I'll end up with a cudgel uh, pretty soon, and then I realized that I would end up doing much better in an offensive type of build. Offensive survival, very underrated in my opinion. I figured I'd just grab him up here. I don't want to deal with them. Was not expecting to get hit there. I think the invisibility threw me off a little bit. I think I just mistimed it more than anything else. So even though I'm only at eight, uh, 8 survival, which is pretty low for this uh, biome, I'm still doing okay, all things considered. Yeah, sometimes... It's dead cells. There's chaos sometimes. You just gotta roll with it. I 
actually that assassin's dagger i recently did a run where i was doing quick bow it was quick bow assassin's dagger with ripper and that is one of my favorite builds i've ever done it was it was really good and so with those kind of with those legendary shields what happens sometimes is you can uh, bring enemies up as long as you're not cursed of course but you can generally bring enemies up uh, just just a good rule of thumb Even as someone who has used Quick Bow since the first uh, iteration of Dead Cells, I, I still tend to struggle with it sometimes. So I was able to get past that pretty nicely. I was, I was very happy with that. Sometimes those uh, big kind of clusters tend to overwhelm the player, but I was able to do it. I was pretty happy with that. Now we get to the fun part, the Telluric, 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 I don't know how to say it, but the, the new, the new weapon you get from, uh, Beating Hand of the King, it's, it's okay, I think there's better ones, like the Giant Whistle is obviously the best one, so those Twin Daggers really did a ton of work for me, and I am so grateful I got to use them. That's one of the nice things about uh, custom runs is you can. There's a lot of big variety. So your build will change. With those failed experiments, sometimes you just have to let them start their attack pattern because they are, they are going to jump behind you every single time and it's very annoying. Nobody likes it, but you still got to deal. Shock is good if you know your enemies are not going to attack. If they're stunned, it's the that's the best time to typically do it. Um, enemies that are not mid attack, it, it does not block attack, so be be aware of that. So, for example, uh, elite lasers, the one that moves up, it's gonna hit you on the way down. And I've learned the hard way: if you're cursed. You're kind of screwed from there. So survival, one of the drawbacks is because you can face tank, sometimes it's easy to face tank. And before you know it, you're at, you're at almost a full stack of malaise. And you just got to be very mindful of that. I like collecting those gardener keys. Um, just get me an extra item and some cash if I need it. I, I usually don't get like any items from it, but it is nice to just have some sort of item. I have to take him up there so the protector wasn't protecting him anymore, and then I could just go use the head on it. Or do that. I guess I did that. Okay, I mean, hey. Sometimes it works, right? And this was definitely working better than me, better for me than knockback shield. Knockback shield is way better as a tactic type of shield than it is than it is as a uh, typical survival shield. There's just way better options. And I ran with that same. I ran with the same shield for most of the for most of this run. Yeah, 
That was kind of annoying. That was a bit chaotic. I could have definitely handled that better. What I could have done instead was go off to the side, take the failed experiments with me, and then deal with the bombers instead of trying to deal with all of them at once. You live and you learn. Um, in hindsight, it's easier to make, to, you know, call out your gameplay than to do it while you're playing because you're a little overwhelmed sometimes. But it's good to know for future runs. Yeah, and that's, that's a good example of like when to use to lurk shot. Uh, basically, it does, it's able to do a lot of damage if you can kind of approach enemies quickly. Make sure they aren't attacking. And uh, actually, something I really like with this 1.4 update was that the new, um, the new stuff that you get from the bosses, the new weapons or skills or whatever, they all, yeah, I think I was critical right here. I had to be really careful at that at this point. Yeah, this is where I was critical, and I think I had to use a health potion. So at this point, the, um, whatchamacallit, the stats are kind of evened out a little bit. 12 is pretty good um, for heading into prison depths. Nothing wrong with 12. Um, typically, you want between 11 to, 11 to 13. 10 is okay, too. Um, typically, in a run, stats will even out, but prison depths, you definitely need a good amount of power to sustain your momentum, sustain your power. Um, especially for those hammers. If you end up with an elite hammer, then good luck. And uh, I go dead inside here because that com that goes well with ne uh, with necromancy because necromancy gives you malice reduction. Dead inside gives you more melee stacks, so I don't have to deal with um, you know using that health potion. I don't think I want to do that just yet. See, I actually didn't realize that I had got hit until, um, yeah, so sometimes in prison depths you gotta be a little bit careful because the knife throws will be will will be invisible for a while. Uh, they will turn into their normal color after some time, but it takes I think a few deaths, I wanna say. So Wolf Trap is extremely effective against the hammers. Just because with the bats flying around, if you're running like a, a range sort of build, then you typically want to be a little bit mindful. So, and by mindful, I kind of mean understanding the space that you're in, not, you know, giving up too much uh, space to the little flying dudes, the little bats. And so if you have a ranged weapon like I do here with the there's a steel, it'll kind of just start hitting the bats. And you want to make sure that, you know, you get enough space where you can start hitting that hammer instead. This was a little bit of a bizarre spike maze, but got through it. So the simple way to deal with those slashers is just to jump over that. And with the knife throwers, essentially what you want to do is you want to uh, roll just as they're about to throw. 
So you keep running and then you roll at the last second. Or you can jump and then roll. There's a lot of ways in which to deal with it. And they're all totally valid. That stun was very, very helpful. I was debating on myself whether or not I wanted to uh, get that, use the worms or not. And if it was double green, I may have considered it, but I think Telluric Shock was doing good enough work for me, along with Wolf Trap, so I decided not to take it. That is a pain to deal with when it's invisible like that. So I just kind of hung out there. I knew I had a couple wolf traps. <laughs> Ran out of ammo, unfortunately, for that. But I do get the kill here. And I'm able to get the invisibility. I take it, but I'm not gonna. It's not gonna last long. I generally don't like taking uh, invisibility. I don't think it's cheating. It's about as much cheating as custom mode is, which is not at all. So right here is kind of boring. I just decide to put my hand on the hammer, or not on the hammer, on the little masker. Um, because I realized that I would not have been able to do much. It's hard to see. I don't have the greatest eyesight in the world. So, play it safe with those. It can be a handful sometimes. That's okay. The invisibility does work, but it's pointless because it's a shield, so... The shield slashers are some of the toughest. So I've been able to get the kill here. That was pretty it's pretty good. I was very happy with that. Those bombs do give me a lot of anxiety when I have to avoid them, but especially because I was in a crowded spot right there. Yep, like right there. And if I was cursed, that's us run over. So it's at this point in the run where I'm still kind of uneasy about what I want to do because I don't like the build that I have at this point. The Nerves of Steel is doing damage, Twin Daggers is doing damage, but I don't have a general theme, which is something I need. And Seismic Strike actually held it down very nicely for me. I was really, really happy with that. And as you see, it's going to not necessarily do a ton of damage, but it was incredibly helpful in what I needed it to do. That's essentially what I made it do. I decided, okay, I'm going to use that to lock enemies in place and then just start attacking with the Twin Daggers because Twin Daggers were doing great up until this point. So why not just keep rolling with it? You, those bats they uh they tend to aggro pretty they tend to aggro more aggressively than most enemies i would say it is a pain in the ass sometimes so here i decide okay i'm gonna take advantage of my visibility for once and and then just roll from here So 
So the hardest curse in the game is this prison death one, because by the end of the game, when you're taking those curses, you are plowing through enemies, including elites. You, it, the, the only reason you would die is if you're being careless, and I did almost take it. Then I realized that my damage output would be awful, so I go back and take the seismic strike. Tentacle was not going to help me at that point. 14 tactics is really good to have when you're in uh, prison depths. That's just an example of how wolf traps can be extremely effective. Yeah, and, and with those bats, sometimes, especially if you're cursed, definitely take that time to be very, very careful. <laughs> because hammers have a very aggressive aggro pattern. And as you can see right here, I'm very surprised. There's an elite there's an elite hammer down there. I'm surprised it didn't aggro me from the start. And I think it's because I was invisible. So I think invisibility did save the run. But what I would have done is I would have just kept running to the next teleporter and I would have just gone to Ossuary. I was not about to deal with that. I only had three left on the curse. That thing aggroes from God knows where. So figured not worth the trouble at all. I typically take acceptance right around this point. It's it helps a ton. <laughs> I can probably kill ten enemies, but why even take that risk? Especially when there's bosses. Just not worth it to me. Especially yeah, and I have three enemies left. And I at that point I realized okay I'm doing doing more damage than I think. I deserve. I leave those enemies on the map because I want to come back to them later. Whether or not I actually do that, eh, who knows. But I do want to take that elite, so I take him. Get my traps laid out. And from there, it's just honestly just be beaten beating them up <laughs> is going from there and that's kind of what seismic strike does really well it just holds that uh, thorny in place and that helps so much and uh, so I decided to come back here later I realize there's more enemies on the map and I don't feel like taking on elite and I do that exact thing right here so that curse chest I believe has a 33 and a half percent chance I try to try out the boomerang you're gonna see it doesn't work um, I am NOT the best at boomerangs I am NOT the type of person that should be using them yes does not fit my playstyle I just, I've never been able to use them. And you're gonna see that right here. I just pretty much say, nope, not, not happening. Not happening.
figured I would just use Telluric Shock here. I have invisibility. Let me. I'll take advantage of it while I have it for another biome or two. Put the traps down. And then just wait to use the shock. That's all I wanted at that point. That's all I wanted. And then there's a couple more enemies on there. I could take them. I don't think I do. But um, got two things done. Got the curse cleared. And I was also able to get some malleys reduction. Some much, much needed malleys reduction. So I guess I never used a health pot. I thought I did. There was a run in which I did take invisibility all the way, but that was because I had owls. And if you've ever used owls, then you know that invisibility is kind of pointless on them. That was a big mistake on my part. I should not have done that. I should have been a little bit more patient, but it worked out. It was not a big deal. I was just being a little impatient. Um... Telluric Shock does have a big range, so I have to kind of be a little bit more patient next time. The Shield Bearers can end a run very, very quickly, because then they'll knock you into something... They'll knock you into something, and then that thing will hit you, and then from there, it's GG. I'm just being incredibly cautious right now. Uh, there isn't a terrible need for me to do it, but it's just, it's for the best. Those lasers are a pain. I hate those lasers with the passion. Especially if you're cursed, it's it's pretty much game over. And uh, this is where the run starts to pick up. Because I decide, screw the wolf trap, I'm going with uh, the death orb. Death orb is now survival, purely survival, so you are guaranteed that plus two. It does an unbelievable amount of damage, and it's a solid ranged, um, it's solid while it's ranged. And especially with something like... Uh, something like Seismic Strike that can hold them in place, or even Wolf Trap. It's really good now. to lurk shocking right here it's not very interesting I'm aware of that but you know that's dead cells sometimes just gotta keep on rolling with it I'm just kind of skipping over enemies here in case I need to uh, go hit up a curse or something Right now, I have a good amount of damage. Yeah, that one I was not expecting. The, when the thornies kind of uh, aggro, it's it's a little difficult sometimes to deal with it. Because uh, especially if you're running melee builds, it's really you have to be careful. I figured Shovel would just work a little bit better. Um, seismic Strike did do a good amount for me, but I was getting to a point where I knew that it wasn't going to last.
still looking for that final curse. I think it's two more curses that I have to take. And those can be a little scary sometimes. <laughs> Definitely can be a little scary. And that's one of the curses right there. And so at the time, I thought that I had done all the curses because I took that extra one that hangs out in Ossuary sometimes, and I thought, okay, like, that'd be it. And no, like, I, I had another one, and I almost ran out of enemies because of it. It would have been a tough fight. And that was a little embarrassing. I had to be, I just had to be really, really careful about that. And also at this point, I really want to get the 60 as well. So I definitely have to be very, very mindful of what's going on around me. Because I think up until this point, I hadn't hit a single door yet. And for a run like this, it's definitely nice to get something. You don't have to, but it's always nice. Because also getting 60 kills means that your build is doing well. And this is where I decided to go double Death Orb. Um, synergy was there, it was definitely, it wasn't not going to help, so, and it, it, it was a good take, at the time it was a good take. So I decided to take the I decided to take the um, food because yes, I'm going to be cursed, but it's only five enemies, and my build starting to come together a little bit. I do have double death orbs, and that is going to be that was going to be very very helpful for me. So I wanted to wait until the shield bearer went back and then I would essentially just handle the field experiment from there. Exactly like that. And that almost was disaster. And that was a complete fail. <laughs> but luckily I got a little lucky there. Um, I did intend on that aggro happening in that spot, but I had no idea whether or not the Death Orb was actually going to hit. Yeah, sometimes with, sometimes with 4 and 5 BC, aggroing enemies in the right spot can be so beneficial. Like you don't necessarily have to you know, fight enemies on plane, you don't have to, you know, do certain things. It's all about really just, like, knowing where you are. And again, I've said this a few times already, just being mindful of the space where you are. So if you can aggro an enemy towards a spot that you have the advantage to do it, and in that respect, it's actually a little bit easier than, four, than um... 3 BC because you have a lot more control over where enemies go and that was I believe the last curse of the level um, and then I wanted to go for 60 as well I'm not sure why the death orb died there um, I think just things happen sometimes and just gotta accept it. And at this, right there, I was really scared of the shockers, so I just wanted to use the uh, arrows that were coming from my twin daggers, but I figured ah, I'd just use the head. 
I'm done with curses. Send the death orb that way and send the death orb the other way. And I decided to just finish out the level by um, completing the rest of the biome because again I did want that 60 and I and I will get it spoiler alert I will get that 60 right there and that was a much needed 60 that was something I really needed to do um, at that point in the run I had not been playing that well and this was Ossuary was really the turning point of my run because now I have the momentum. I'm able to, you know, hit enemies at will. Um, I don't have to deal with, you know, big stacks of malleys anymore. I know I'm at about half at this point, but still, like I felt pretty comfortable. And sometimes that's what happens. Um, sometimes that's just what happens in Dead Cells. Like you need that space to be more comfortable and. Once you're there, um, pretty manageable game for the most part. There's some stuff that's still difficult. Certain boss fights, certain enemies, still tough, but if you can if you can get to a point where you are at least a little bit happy with the run, then you should be able to knock out a win. And it's all about just finding the right synergy. So as you can see, I'm still only using the Twin Daggers. There was no need for me to even attempt to use the Shovel. Might as well have just stuck with the uh, Seismic Strike. But, you know, you live and you learn. Shovel's not my favorite weapon in the world. So right here is where the run really changes. I pick up that cudgel and I decided to get rid of the shovel. Or did I get rid of twin daggers? Yeah, I got rid of twin daggers, stuck with shovel instead. I didn't want shovel for that long. I figured, eh, just why not just keep it? And this and this boss fight is gonna be huge for me because I needed I knew that I wanted to go into it and get a no hit. Because I wanted any weapon but a shovel, or maybe a Valmont swoop, just something that not of that nature that was like a little slower and would have just kind of damaged my run a little bit. This is a very boring fight. Um, Timekeeper, Giant, uh, Concierge, and the final boss, they're all much more interesting. I'm just not a big fan of this because it's a lot of waiting, it's a lot of just kind of messing around, and especially if you have, you know, builds that aren't meant for bosses, then it's kind of difficult. Luckily for me, he was stunned because then he would have brought out that damage aura, and I would have been, I would not have gotten that no hit. Maybe if he had like a couple new attacks and then in the next update that'd be really nice. Because right now it's just kind of me just doing this and it's not very interesting at all. It's almost done. That final parry got it. Got the malaise reduction. And I did take that nutcracker because it goes well with cudgel. 
And I had it for all about 30 seconds. And it ended up being the right move, was getting rid of the Nutcracker. Because this weapon right here, take it until the end. Shots leave Trail of Flames, I'm in for that. I almost sold it too. I was really thinking about it, but I figured DOT would be better at this point. Because now I get two different types of damage. I get burn and I get poison, and it does a lot of damage. It smokes out certain enemies in one shot. It takes out others pretty quickly. It's very efficient, as you can see right there. Yeah, it's just tearing through enemies right now, which is what I honestly, that's what I have been waiting for this entire run. I know I got hit right there, but it was something that I really needed to do. A little, st a little shaky start there. I was kind of questioning if I had been doing the right thing, but... I would have definitely not been able to use Nutcracker. I have never been able to vibe with that weapon at all. Sometimes those bombers take a little bit of a nudge to aggro. Sometimes they aggro from out of nowhere. It's a little inconsistent sometimes, but that makes it more interesting. And I just wait for the Rampager to die, grab that curse. I briefly thought about taking the Sinew Slicer, but the Death Orbs were doing what they needed to do. And plus, the biggest thing is that I did not want to lose two points on survival. See me struggling to jump up there a little bit. It's all part of the game. So this was kind of an old school tactics run a little bit. Except, you know, I have a shield. That's really the only difference. But this isn't too much different than what I would do in a Brutality Damage Over Time run, because essentially what you're working with, you have your main weapon, which is Carbine, you have Shield and Cudgel, uh, and then you have your two... Uh, then you have your two... Uh, skills. In this case, it's Death Thor, but you know, in that brutality run, it'll typically be Knife Dance or Flamethrower Turret or, um, or like Cleaver, for example. And those uh, work really well with, the, with that sort of build, with the damage over time build. And then, of course, uh, Kudos Bow always is nice to have. That was a little close right there. I was playing a little. I was playing with fire a little bit. What's funny was that I was thinking like I was gonna go kill that enemy first when I was cursed, but I didn't, I never got to him. Completely forgot. Those usually aren't that bad. Um, you just gotta be a little patient for the first one, and then the rest follow. They follow, they do follow a certain pattern. Let's 
definitely a very clutch parry. And that actually could have killed my 60 right there. But I was able to dodge just in time. Just waiting for our little dinosaur friend over here. Knock him out. Occasionally I'll just pause because I need a little bit of a break or I'll just see something that, okay, like, do I need to think about this twice or, you know, just something like that. Because these are pretty long runs, they're about one to, they're between one to two hours depending on what your build is and it, it's a little tiring sometimes to be completely honest. And I want to say this is the last curse of the biome. That was very reckless. Um, I, I was able to kind of deal with it in time, but I don't like how I handled it. Same with that one. I am just sometimes I get a little reckless, I get a little overconfident, and that's the result that you see. I figure just don't take any risks, just leave them up there. I have, I believe I got the 60 already. No, I was close to the 60. At this point I was actually looking for a wolf trap. Uh, because with the carbine as my only damage output, I really needed something that would be able to uh, hold, the, hold the enemy in place, at least for a little bit. But Cudgel was doing a great job for me. It's pretty much this entire run. And that was the 60 right there. And you're not always going to get something you want from... You're not always going to get what you want out of those, time, out of those doors, but... It is good to have, and I did, and I lied. I did have one more curse. Yeah, those biters, they, they're pretty scary sometimes. What I should have done there instead, instead of jumping around like that, I really should have uh, used a death orb. And the nice thing is, there's biters on the screen, so I have a lot of enemies that I can take out right now. And I was very excited about that uh, power grenade, but I figured Death Orb was doing fine for me. And so, two enemies left, and there were those bats. So, easy peasy. Well, uh, one, excuse me. Yeah. But either way, I was going for those bats no matter what. And now we got 60, cleared out all the curses. Time to hit up the Sepulchre. I don't do Clock Tower anymore because you don't really get that you don't really get that many uh, scrolls from Clock Tower compared to Sepulchre. Like you can jump from 25 to 32. Like you get about seven. Here's where I realized that I had never actually went for the key. I felt like kind of an idiot, but I also realized, okay, I was trying to work, I was trying to focus on the build, but no biggie, just head back, go get the, go get the scroll, and there's the key over there, just go grab that. I figured there'd be a couple enemies there. Uh, I can get some more cash, can get more things. Shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, again, I just paused it because I need a little bit of a break. 
Uh, but I did cut that part out. I, it was like a 10 minute pause or something. I don't think anyone wants to get 10 minute pause in the video, so figured just cut that part out. Nothing really happened. Not splicing clips for my own benefit. Yeah, th that Death Orb, it, it does a lot, and it, it's so good. And I just, I needed some more malaise reduction, and I almost uh, screwed the pooch on that. But now I needed to go all the way around, go get the scroll, and kill those pirate captains up there. But hey, you know, if I hadn't forgotten about the key, then I would have never found that other scroll, so that's at least good. One of the understated beauties of that affix on the amulet is the uh, collect, gold, collect golden cells over unlimited distance, is that you actually don't have to put yourself in the line of fire. You can just be as content as you want to be. Yeah, I don't like those boxes. They are still a little bit broken. Especially if you're on the same plane as your enemy. And you're just a certain amount of distance to the right or to the left. You're going to get hit by that box. It's going to suck. It takes so much damage. Especially for me who does mainly tactics. It's... It's pretty unsalvageable damage that you have done to you. It's at least half, I believe. And it's Sepulchre time. Uh, the main issue with Sepulchre is the darkness, obviously, uh, and the traps. Uh, the traps, you can take your time. I think you have about 12 seconds, which is a pretty long time in this game. Uh, and the main idea is focus on the damage over time. Uh, the toughest enemies are going to be those failed experiments because they do take a little bit of damage. But I think overall it should be pretty doable. Yeah, so one of the best things about Sepulcher is the Dark Tractors. They are very weak. They, even the Elise, they will often go down to a single hit, which saves me a ton of time. The trade off is that they do a lot of damage. Um, I figured why not take the curse right here? Because there's four enemies down there, and then we have the. You know, kamikazes, and those are pretty easy to kill with this build. Shouldn't be a big deal, and it wasn't. I cleared that out in a matter of, like, a few seconds. So just hang out on the ledge. Still have that. So this is definitely doing a ton of damage for me right now. Even failed experiments are going down within seconds. So definitely the right choice that I made in getting the carbine over the uh, nutcracker from Concierge. A little trick that I have in Sepulchre is usually one of those 
Uh, four cell or two cell doors has a ton of enemies and typically they don't have elites in them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but if they do, I try to find that elite right away. Um, but usually I just kind of wait. And from there, what I do is anytime I pick up a curse, because there's two uh, curse chests in there, I will go and kill the enemies in that curse, in that, um, in the cell door, and I'm good to go. It helps a lot. I was really debating this for a while because I wanted a different shield that did more damage so I could use, because the idea was I was going to replace acceptance with spite. So in order to do that, I would rather not have a cudgel. Uh, spike shield would be nice. Bloodthirsty would be nice. I just stuck with a cudgel for now because I didn't want to pay the money for a punishment shield that I really did not need at that point in the run. So one of the things I was struggling with uh, was kind of which key do I press or which key do I put my uh, carbine on, which one do I put my cudgel on. I typically put, I'm weird a little bit, I put my cudgel on square. Um, typically that's just what I do with shields, what I've been comfortable with for the longest time. I don't know why I do it, I just kind of do it. And that was a 60 right there, so definitely I was going to get something good. Uh, I just didn't know what yet. I still don't know what. I don't think it was anything that I kept. It might have been a wolf trap. I did take a wolf trap at some point. And if you had noticed, I have barely even used my death orbs yet. And that's just how much damage I'm doing with the carbine at the moment. It has been a saving grace for me. So that's uh, one of the cursed. Uh, that's one of the cursed doors, and we're gonna pretty much find out, you know, where the good enemies are. And I think it was that four cell door that I was in earlier that I'm gonna stick in. And what I should have done there is I should have left those enemies alone. I don't know why I even bothered. It was not a good. It was not very smart on my part. I could have taken them later. Could have taken them after the curse, but. Again, it's one of those things where you're looking at things in hindsight and you realize, oh, that's a mistake I made there, I should have done this there. It's not worth speculating over. Shout out to Twin Daggers. Really saved me in my early run. Five enemies. We're going to that four cell door. Or, no, we're taking on those first. I did not realize that I had not uh, defeated them yet. And there are enemies up there. So, at that point of the run, I figured that, okay, the four cell door, I can do that anytime. Those enemies are up there right now. There's several of them. Might as well just clear out the next curse with them. And they're all bunched up too, so they all get hit by the carbine uh, cloud. With that, it was just more about getting the light. Because I, I really needed the light at that point. Because I think the run before, I had actually died because of darkness. Because I couldn't find any lights. Because one of them had uh, expired. The temporary lights. They had expired. And that was very difficult for me. I was not happy about that. And that was the right move. Uh, getting the wolf trap in, in, instead of having two death orbs. Um, Wolf Trap and Death Corp go hand in hand because it traps them in place and you can work on 
you know, inflicting damage with Death, death Orb. And it's just, it's a very useful uh, synergy. And that's the final curse of the game right here. It was very tempting to pick up the oil sword. Uh, then I remembered, you know, having a shield would be much more beneficial for me at this point in the run. I'm not sure what I did there and why I did that, but it is what it is sometimes. I honestly don't know what I was thinking. I think I wanted to go back to those enemies up there, but I was also thinking, is this really a smart thing to do? Yeah, so that was the first uh, hit that I had taken in a good while, and uh, luckily I'm survival, so I didn't take too much from that, but, you know, getting some health back would definitely be helpful for me at this stage in the game. But that's what necromancy is for. I have enough, more than enough health, uh, more than enough survival to where, you know, I can, you know, play pretty casually at this point. I can, you know, keep doing my thing, keep knocking enemies out. That health is going to come back. Necromancy is giving me a lot of health back at this point. And I have malaise reduction if uh, once I beat the boss. Um, it's a really, really good mutation. I would say it's the best survival mutation. That and Spite, I would say, are my personal favorites. So this part was a little scary because I knew I had a ways to go down and I was scared about darkness again. And then I had realized that there was still an elite on hand. So if I was going to do my thing against the elite, then... Okay, that gives me a light source, multiple light source, because there's two of them. And I'm also able to, um, you know, get some money from that, uh, from that amulet. So multiple pronged, um, elite being a light source was one of the biggest changes in, I think it was 1.1, I'm not entirely sure. But it was one of the best changes that they could have possibly done because it helped me out so much. And even like getting hidden items in the wall, that became a light source. I don't know when they added it. I, it was either 1.1 or 1.2, but either way, it was a much needed change and it made Sepulcher so much easier. So as you can see, I went with Spite. Um, with the Timekeepers, little shurikens, and Hand of the King shots, and Collector shots, and just in general, it's just nice to have an option where you can, you know, just hit enemies hard. 
you know, with defense. And so that was kind of what I wanted to do. There are some kind of splicing problems with um, the video editor that I'm using right now. I'm still kind of new to all this. But generally, like, whenever there was a big pause in the video, like, I would just kind of, like, go get something to eat or something like that. Then I figured, okay, like, I needed to, you know, edit that out. But as you can see, it's a pretty quick fight. Yeah, she got completely shredded. Very, very happy with that fight, and I think what I'm going to be able to do now is uh, find out what the legendary item is. I don't know if I'm going to take it, but it's good to have that no hit. Because now I'm, yeah, and I thought about taking it because it's 100% damage to enemies full stop, so not 100% damage taken, and that would have probably been really good, but I, I liked the DOT thing that I have going on, the damage over time thing. I figured that it was it wasn't necessary. Um, I didn't want to change what had been working for me up until this point. So inquisitors are definitely the scariest enemy because uh, they they do a ton of damage. It's not just that, it's that they will shoot out of nowhere. So one strategy I like to do is just use the head. And so that's the right trigger for those who don't know. When you beat the game initially on zero boss cells, you are granted that ability. It's called the homunculus rune. And this is just completely shredding all the enemies right now. And the only thing that's really going to stop me at this point from achieving what I want to with this run is just critical mistakes. And, you know, to be fair, it is a long game. It, it happens. You know, people will make mistakes during the course of the game and it's going to be tough. So now another one of my parts with uh, High Peak Castle is I want to clear out the whole stage first before getting into the rooms. And for me, it's just more of a mental thing than anything else. I don't want to, you know, be caught off guard by anything, essentially. It is very satisfying to parry those, I will say that much. Those can be, those upward lasers are pretty annoying when you don't see them, but there's not much you can do about it sometimes. And that's another one of my strategies with uh, High Peak Castle, is if I have a shield and I see Inquisitors, just stay, parry, good to go. I'm not going to risk anything, I'm not going to move forward, just do what I keep doing. That was just to aggro the bomber. Nothing, no other reason. And uh, my favorite part is when those idiots like to uh, like to uh, jump right into the spikes. It's pretty funny.
I really wasn't expecting this run to end up like that. And that's another one of the things that I've gotten a lot better at is learning how to recover from mistakes that I make during the course of a run. Like that was a mistake right there getting hit by the bomber, but I decided instead, okay, instead of dwelling on that, let's see what we can do instead. And so I just took, so decided, okay, let's parry that Rampager, let's parry the Inquisitor, and then we should be good to go. So I did reroll a few times. I wanted that spike shield very, very badly. Just that spike mutation is just, it's, it's worth it for me with spike and spiked shield. It does a ton of damage. So one thing is I had actually Again, because I'm not used to the shield being on triangle for me, because this is such an odd build, I had gotten confused and I ended up taking a costly hit from an Inquisitor. So I actually could have gotten 60 if not for that. So that was a little disappointing, but overall, I mean, you know, it, the, the build is doing what it needs to be doing. Again, it doesn't get much health back, but or any health back, because I have dead inside. But a little malaise reduction, it's good to go. This game really wanted me to have the lightning bolt. And to be fair, I actually love the lightning bolt. It's one of my favorite weapons in the entire game, but it just was not going to happen there. Demons are pretty scary to me. And that double Inquisitor uh, spot is always there in High, in High Peak Castle. Like, no exceptions. And once you figure out the trick to uh, aggroing bombers, you can really use that to your advantage. It's definitely shredding a ton of enemies right now, and I was very, very happy with that. And I actually didn't see that bomber coming, but he was slow enough so I could react pretty quickly to it. So I figure at that point, I've already seen all three doors. Let's just get this over with. And in the doors, I definitely make use of the head. Um, it is just so much easier for me than any other option.
the elites in the room, I think they're a little bit weaker because they go down pretty quickly. More so than, you know, normal elites in the biome. So I don't know what the changes are to those elites, but they're, they're pretty weak. Like, even in Zero Boss Up, when I first started, like, I rarely ever got hit by them. Again, just playing it safe, making sure that, you know, I don't, don't make any critical mistakes. Because I mean, one mistake is really going to cost me the run at this point. So again, just ag aggro the demons, same principle. Um, I really messed up there though, unfortunately. Getting 16 high peak castle is always good. And that was actually a really close parry too. And just sit and shoot at them and then get the key and then get out. Except here, I forgot the key. And I came back and I took a hit and not fun. Not a good idea by me. That was very sloppy on my part. Sometimes I play this and I wonder how I've gotten as far as I have in this game. Now waiting for our little demon buddies to show up. Knock them out once, and we're good to go. That was very, very close to being disastrous. Actually, those royal guards aren't too difficult. All you need to do is roll for the spike and then uh, just jump a little bit away for the other attack. The, his little stomp thing, the one that Anthem King does. Exactly like that. All you need to do is just roll away. It's very low pressure. I was very tempted to take the heavy crossbow. But ultimately, for me, it just wasn't worth it. And supposedly, that's the last lead. It, it's, it, it was, but I played... I made a very sloppy mistake towards the end, so... I had to pay the consequence for that, unfortunately. And you'll be able to see that in a little bit. Where I had no idea where to go. That's another problem that I have with High Peak Castle is that it's such a maze. I get a little flustered sometimes trying to deal with it. That one hit, even on a survival build, that one hit did a ton of damage on me. So I believe when 1.2 Alpha came out, you were able to uh, parry the down smash for the uh, bombers. I think this is around the... Uh, this is the same point where I was just like, oh, I'm an idiot, because I realized that, oh, the key was already there, and I had already beaten them. I just should have gone the other way. Again, people make mistakes, and it's like I, what I said earlier, sometimes you just lose focus in the middle of a run, and it's difficult. It's not an easy game, fortunately. If it was easy, everyone would be playing it. That was the other mistake that I made because I was so flustered from the other thing that happened. I forgot to pick up the uh, 
I forgot to go through the third door and pick up the uh, final scroll. So just a lot of mistakes all around on that on that front. And I finally figured that I would switch the shield and the carbine, and then from there I was comfortable not changing how I play the game, <laughs> even if it's a little weird sometimes. So funny thing, I know how to uh, parry Hand of the King's most of his attacks, except for that initial first strike. Because on the first race, he only does that one strike. So I actually wasn't expecting the face to be open because I wasn't really looking at health. So this one I actually messed up on a little bit. I should have grabbed the ledge. I don't know why that didn't happen for me, but it 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 just happens sometimes. But end of the king fight, pretty quick, done, done and dusted. Let's get it over with. Galley's reduction. Should have been a no hit, but sometimes uh, that's just not what happens, and it's unfortunate. And you lament on those mistakes, like I'm doing right now, but. Just gotta keep moving. There's one more biome, one more boss, and then we're done with the game. And I'm done with this recording. So overall, Astrolab's a pretty decently easy level outside of the Librarians. If you don't know librarians, there's the little dudes that shoot at you. They're very annoying. Um, you make one mistake and they do a ton of damage, similar to the collector's attack. So yeah, you gotta aim that pretty much on point, especially with this build, because you can't parry those as much as I would love to. And apparently the defenders, so the little uh, shield, the guys walking around with the fire hydrants, apparently they have an attack. I've just never seen it. Because they go down like that. They're very, very fragile. They're by themselves. And they don't attack if they, they never attack if they're attached to an enemy. So apparently they have an attack. And I didn't know this. As you can see, and also, like, I'm still struggling with my button placement. I don't know why. I think I was just overthinking at this point. I wasn't worried about that. I knew that I had the kill right there. One thing I don't like about Astrolab is how confusing it can be sometimes. Yeah, I was not happy with getting hit there. I really should have done a better job of parrying. Yeah, it's just playing the waiting game with that. <laughs> the birds are very much immune to the wolf trap. And the birds are very difficult otherwise. Like that. Cause you can't you can't parry that down smash. You you can hold your shield up, but it's still doing a lot of damage. Without the shield, oh, it's at least on survival, it's at least thirty to forty percent of your health. On tactics, it's good eighty percent. It's awful. I was pretty lucky to dodge that right there. Very very lucky. Yep, just let the let the death orb do its thing. So one change they did make to I think it was 1.4, it might have been 1.3, is that the uh, magic mastery, I think that's what they're called, 
they uh, their lasers don't actually shoot um, you know through uh, those wall things I guess I don't know what they're called platforms they don't shoot through platforms anymore The frustrating thing about Astrolab is that it is kind of annoying to navigate sometimes. Like, I will straight up just get lost. I think I spent a, like a, over a half an hour just trying to figure out where to go. And that was incredibly frustrating for me. Because I just want to keep playing. And it, 5BC is already incredibly slow as is. I was thinking about taking it, and then I realized why I got rid of Cudgel in the first place. It wouldn't have been smart on my part. Yeah, I think at this part I was a little bit lost. But luckily I found that guy. I love it. I just played the waiting game the entire time. So there are two librarians in that section. Um, both are a pain. Death Orb did its thing. I was very scared that the amulet had fallen, but no. Get myself a little extra health right there. That's always nice. And the last library should be coming up. And that was unfortunate placement for me. Luckily, I wasn't too impacted by it. Yep, and that should be the last, or second to last library, I believe. Astrolab is just a really slow level. One problem that I have had with Astrolab in the past has been with the librarians, they will aggro you from what feels like all the way on from the other side. So like that, I have two enemies at once, but I was lucky that she hit the toxic cloud before anything really happened. So I ended up not being that big of a deal, but I've lost runs before to that, and it's very frustrating because you have to focus on two enemies that both have downward motions that you cannot parry. So if you roll past one, you still have to deal with the other. It's funny because I used to get hit by those lasers all the time when I was first starting in Astrolab. Now I almost never get hit by them. Like, it's kind of crazy. Just wait for him and then use the spike shield. 
it's just a lot more efficient than having to worry about the carbine. Yeah, and this that's the part of that section that has a ton of enemies. So I typically try to avoid them. I probably could have done more with the head, but I was getting very impatient and I was kind of tired, so I just wanted to get this run kind of over with. It's a fun run, but the run is over an hour and a half at this point. Well, in game time, not really, but, you know, I had been playing Dead Cells for over an hour and a half, and I was just done. I was just exhausted. And that one should be dead. And we got our elevator keys. I think right here I was looking for the elevator key because I couldn't find it. <laughs> they pop up in weird spots. I don't know why they pop up in the spots they do. I think it's because the birds in general are a little glitched. I mean, that elevator thing is kind of a glitch. I, I Maybe not. I think that just is how the birds are. They're not going to attack you on the elevator. They'll attack you once you get down, and then it's very scary, but... Um, the other part with that is that the birds can push you into the lasers, and that has happened to me before. I, I had a brutality run, I believe, and it just knocked me into laser, knocked me down to half health. I was able to get some back on the recovery, but other than that, it was kind of annoying to deal with. And uh, we're at our last fight. So collectors are pretty easy boss. I think him and Concierge are some of the easier bosses in the game. And I think it's because I, with Concierge, I just, I face him so often. I know his attack patterns and the goal is now to know it, but it's almost, it's pretty hard to know it. I should not have used the Death Orb right there. I made a pretty bad mistake on that end. And also there. That was like the perfect time to use my... Uh, to use my health potion. Because nothing would have happened to me. So I was, I was pretty happy with myself there. What's funny is that I actually find it easier to roll from those. I'm not sure why, it's just it's just a little bit easier for me. I can't really explain it that well. Yeah, I was playing pretty sloppy right there. Spike Shield definitely did a lot. But his health is going down a little slower than I wanted it to. final shot and there we go another successful run very happy with that um, very odd type of build um, not used to doing that sort of thing but 
you know, I think it worked out for the better. DOT runs are very, very fun. They're very, very fun. And I, I think, you know, going forward, I want to try more stuff with DOT, such as, you know, Knife Dance, Hokuto's Bow, Alchemic Carbine, or Fire Bands, um, you know, things like that. It does a ton of damage. It um, gives you a lot of room for creativity. I think that's what I like about it the most. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, thank you all for joining me. I know this was a long one, but I really do appreciate you guys watching. Um, have a great night, everybody.